Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I should say good afternoon to everyone on the East Coast uh, and everyone in the Central Time Zone. Good morning to everyone joining us from the Pacific Time Zone and on the West Coast. My name is Kevin Bauman. I'm the Director of Philanthropic Initiatives here at Capture Higher Ed, and we're very thankful that you took either your an afternoon hour, your lunch hour, or maybe some uh, time in the morning uh, to spend some time talking about what we think is a very important topic, and that's marketing automation uh, entering into higher education and advancement specifically. I'm joined today by our National Vice President, Heather Mueller, who I will ask to make an introduction here shortly. Um, but I want to take just a quick moment to talk about what we can expect uh, over our time together today. Uh, we'll start with a, a quick introduction of who's Kevin, who's Heather, why are they qualified to talk about this? Uh, we will move into some terminology that we use in marketing automation. Heather and I live in this world every single day, and so we may inadvertently start talking about some terminology um, that may be new to some of you. So we figured we would introduce that at the very beginning. We'll then talk about some uh, strategy examples, some current use case studies, um, and some of the initial results that we found in our first uh, 30 days. And I think uh, we're, we're very proud of, I should say I know we're very proud of, um, and then we will follow up with Heather walking us through an actual example of marketing automation in Capture Behavioral Engagement, our marketing automation platform. A little bit about me, and, and then I'll turn it over to Heather. I won't spend too long talking about myself, but again, my name is Kevin Bauman. I'm the Director of Philanthropic Initiatives here at Capture Higher Education. I've spent the last 15 years working with universities across the country, integrating annual, annual fund uh, and major gift solicitations. Uh, the first 10 years, I started as a student caller, as I, I hope some of you on the phone uh, got your start in the phone a um, fell in love with it, and then moved my way up to be a senior manager and consultant in the annual fund world, working with universities across the country, integrating their uh, phone a direct mail, and online giving strategies. For the last five years, I transitioned over to the major gift side of the house, working with both Texas State University and the University of Louisville, pursuing six and seven figure gifts. So with that, Heather, I'll turn it over to you to maybe give a quick introduction of yourself uh, and introduce a little bit about Capture before we jump in. Sure, absolutely. Thank you all again for spending time with us during what I know are very, very busy days on campus. Uh, my name is Heather Mueller. I'm the National Vice President here at Capture. Um, I work primarily with our sales team, helping uh, talk with folks like you out in the world uh, about what we do here at Capture. Uh, before jumping to the other side of the desk, I spent most of my career in higher ed on the enrollment management side. I was last seated as a vice president for enrollment management at a small private school in Illinois, um, and then spent about three years uh, working with a small boutique enrollment management consulting firm, helping colleges and universities across the country uh, develop strong enrollment management strategies and recruit great students for their institution. Um, I've been with Capture since the very beginning. So for the last six years, we entered into the market six years ago, um, really focused on recruitment marketing services for the enrollment management side of the house. Uh, three years ago, we built the platform that we're going to show you today, Capture Behavioral Engagement. And our initial intention was to provide some very actionable intelligence uh, for our enrollment management partners about what their prospective students are doing when they're not answering an email or picking up the phone and truly understanding what their behavior is and what that means in the recruitment process. About a year ago, we met Kevin, which we're so fortunate to have him on the team and his expertise in the world of advancement. And we were talking about behavioral engagement and marketing automation and what that's brought to enrollment management. And Kevin drew some very natural parallels to the advancement world for us. Um, and so we've, we've stepped into the advancement world and hoping that you see the value that we do in the tool today. So Kevin, I'll flip it back to you to, to give us a better overview. Great, thank you. So what we're gonna focus on today is capture behavioral engagement. That is marketing automation uh, that capture, behavior, capture has created specifically for higher education, as Heather mentioned. Uh, I won't spend too much time outlining it right now, if only to say, uh, behavioral engagement is our ability to track visitors to the university website and then generate specific marketing messages, whether they be friend raising or fundraising, uh, to increase the relationship or increase philanthropic support based on specific behaviors and points of affinity for each individual alumnus at the time that they're engaged. 
Capture behavioral engagement is the cornerstone of a larger suite of products that Capture has. I will not turn this into a Capture commercial, but two that I think are worthwhile noting are digital display. I think we're all very familiar with going to Amazon, putting the shoes in your cart, um, and then not buying them and going to Facebook, and the shoes are sitting there in a banner ad in your Facebook. Um, so that is commonly referred to as retargeting in our industry. Um, and we here at Capture um, have digital display technology. Uh, I'd encourage you to maybe think about an opportunity for uh, phone-a-thon fulfillment. So Kevin received a phone call. Uh, he did not fulfill his gift, although if we're talking about me, I would always fulfill my gift. Um, he did not fulfill his gift. And the next time, 30 days or 60 days out, that he logs into his Facebook, uh, he receives a compelling call to action from a student who benefited from a scholarship reminding him to fulfill his gift. Smart direct mail. I just want the audience to know that what we talk about today is going to generate a significant amount of data and very valuable data. And we're going to talk about its application within a digital environment and our ability to uh, provide immediate messaging. The data that we, that we show today is also going to uh, have, have value across the, the solicitation calendar. So we're going to be able to tell you who your most active alumni are so you can focus direct mail, you can focus uh, phone-a-thon, you may even focus some of your additional digital technology and digital solicitations specifically on your most engaged audience um, to try and reduce any waste or overspend. So with that, I will jump into capture behavioral engagement, and I promised a few uh, terminology trends that, that Heather and I are going to throw out rather frequently that we want to make sure that everyone is familiar with. The first is dynamic content. Dynamic content is, is our ability to deliver the right message at the right time to the right prospect. You'll see three different messages in front of you. On the far left is an invitation to join the president to the state of the university reception. In the middle is a plan giving uh, a toaster. Uh, so see there I go with, uh, with terminology. In the middle is a plan giving message uh, for alumni that may be of that age or in that demographic. And on the far right is a young alum uh, message. And dynamic content basically allows us to deliver these messages on your website in real time based on specific behaviors and or uh, demographic information. So may, it may be if I use the plan giving uh, message in the middle, it may be that you have an alum that is visiting your website every, every week for a month and they are above the age of 60 and um, very active on your website. We would want to give them the opportunity to explore a plan giving option. Um, and so they would receive that message where another alum may be a young alum and would receive young alumni messaging. I won't go too far into that because I know Heather's going to go into that later on, but just know dynamic content uh, is the external facing portion of captured behavioral engagement. Internally, it's also important to note that marketing automation helps deliver the right information to the right internal uh, officer at the right time. So on the far left, you'll see an immediate alert that we have for, um, for our gift officers. We all know that there are prospects that we just want to know when they breathe. It may be that they're assigned to the president. It may be that they uh, hold special weight at the university. Uh, and we want to know anytime they do that. Marketing automation gives us the ability to notify a gift officer, a vice president, even the president, anytime one of these one of these alumni takes an action in your digital environment. If they register for an event, you'll know about it. If they read an article in the online newsletter, you'll know about it. I think you get the point there. On the right is a daily visitor report. This is one of the things I'm most excited about in making data actionable, and it's a synopsis of the last 24 hours worth of activity on your website. Heather's going to go into more detail on this in the example, but as a major gift officer, you're going to see that you're able to see capacity information, affinity information, and individual points of affinity for every visitor to the university's website yesterday that we have identified in the database. So just know, as we talk about terminology, dynamic content is the ability to deliver the right message to the right alumnus at the right time. And uh, real-time reporting simply refers to marketing automation's ability to make data actionable. So let's talk about some of the strategies. I promised we would talk about some strategies. So as Heather does the uh, overview, that you're able to uh, understand how these strategies can be, can be implemented. As we talk about a case study, 
Uh, we are currently partnered with a private liberal arts school in the Midwest. If you are not a private liberal arts school in the Midwest and you're calling in today, uh, don't be worried. Uh, the data that you're going to see is going to be reported out in percentages. Uh, our hope is that you're able to take this information and make it relatable to your specific alumni base. So as we started out, we identified five goals with this institution. Uh, the first was to identify new major gift prospects. I think we can all relate to the fact that oftentimes we're going back to the same major gift prospects um, and uh, there's value in expanding our major gift uh, uh, pool. The second is to build profiles for existing major gift prospects. We know our existing prospects, uh, but maybe they have an interest elsewhere that, that they may not have told us about that they're exhibiting online. The third is to measure our annual fund messaging effectiveness across demographics. The fourth is to identify passionate ambassadors for the Day of Giving campaign. And then the fifth would be identifying plan giving opportunities. I'll take a step back and just quickly mention that you'll notice that there's not a specific focus on just major gifts or just plan giving or just annual funds. The value of the data that CBE and Capture Behavioral Engagement is going to provide is going to be used across the advancement office. So let's talk about results. In just 30 days of being with this partner, we identified three and a half percent of the alumni database active on the website. Of that three and a half percent, 60 percent of those alumni were rated at leadership or major gift capacity. I'll say that again. 60% were rated at leadership or major gift capacity. It's probably also worth noting that over half of the alumni that we identified graduated before 1985. I think it's a common misconception that most alumni visiting the website are young alumni that are a little bit more engaged with technology. Uh, we're at a point in time where just about everybody is comfortable on the internet. Um, and it turns out that older alumni have a little bit more disposable time. It's an empty nester or, or whatever their stage in life. So um, it doesn't surprise us that those online graduated earlier, uh, but that they also have higher capacity. We talked about a goal of identifying new major gift prospects. Um, and 33% of the alumni that we identified were leadership or major gift capacity and were not currently assigned to a gift officer. So Gone are the days that we now have to, that we have to call a list based on capacity alone. Um, we can now identify affinity and capacity and assign those prospects accordingly. The potential value of prioritizing these high capacity and high affinity prospects is between $500,000 and $1.1 million for this partner. So let's go back and revisit the goals that we set out. And understanding capture believes that data plus collaborative insight creates strong strategy. So we talked about identifying new major gift prospects, 33% of the alumni we identified would fit that category. Uh, what we haven't talked about is number two, building profiles for existing major gift prospects. So as it turns out, 25% of the alumni that we identified on the website were currently assigned to a, to a major gift officer. These gift officers now receive those daily reports of activity inside their portfolio. Anytime one of their prospects registers for an event, they receive an alert in time to then get to the event themselves. Anytime the alum registers for a, or explores the basketball schedule, they receive an alert so they can happen to invite that alum to the right basketball game. As we go to goal number three, measure annual fund messaging effectiveness and demographics. One of the things that I'm really excited about is we were able to report back to this partner that the messaging that was being delivered today was resonating very well with older alumni. As it turns out, that same messaging was not resonating as well with younger alumni. The data we reported back to the partner was broken out by uh, grad year, and we were able to see double digit uh, engagement scores for our uh, older alumni uh, and single digit percentage engagement scores for our younger alumni. And so for the first time, we had data to identify who was resonating with our message and who was being missed. And we're going to visit this a number of times in the presentation, but it's more than who is giving and who is not giving. It's more about friend raising, creating good fundraising opportunities. I think we can all identify who is giving and who is not. But if we're able to identify who our message is not resonating with and then alter that message to resonate with that audience, 
then we're able to friend raise that population so when we try to fundraise from that population, we're more successful. In this case, the strategy that developed from this data is discussing young alumni messaging in our upcoming e-newsletter. The fourth goal was to identify passionate ambassadors for our Day of Giving campaign. Uh, I think I'm gonna go on a limb and say just about everybody does a Day of Giving campaign. I'll, I'll assume most of you calling in today have. Um, and one of the struggles is identifying alumni that would be willing to share their story, would be willing to uh, create peer-to-peer -peer marketing opportunities. And using Capture's tracking technology, we're able to identify alumni that have the highest affinity for the institution. Um, we can then sort the list, as we talked about earlier. We can sort the list of those alumni, identify our most passionate alumni, reach out to them prior to the day of giving to empower them with marketing materials and asking them to share their story on why they give to create real-time peer-to-peer uh, communications during our day of giving. This was so successful for this specific partner that we identified several hundred active alumni and we recently empowered them with a uh, ambassador toolkit prior to the day of giving, which is coming. Last slide, Heather, and then I promise I'll turn it over to you. Um, we, uh, we're using Capture's affinity information to prioritize gift officer travel. So most of us are familiar with scheduling our anchor appointment based on an existing relationship uh, that has capacity. Uh, once that existing relationship and anchor appointment was scheduled, we were able to sort the list by high capacity alumni in the local area that also had affinity for the institution. So they were active on the website. Um, and then we prioritized our outreach to schedule appointments with those alumni, making scheduling the appointment easier. And I also hope to be able to show that there were fewer cancellations. That trip has not happened yet, so stay tuned, um, but something we're really excited about. And lastly is identifying new plan giving opportunities. I think we all have the experience where a planned gift just shows up to the institution. Uh, it may be that an alum passed and the gift was never announced before they passed and, and a check just shows up from the estate. At Capture, we're working to end that. Um, we are currently monitoring the plan giving website for this partner and we are identifying alumni that are researching a plan giving opportunity but that do not take the next step to, in, to schedule time with the plan giving officer. With this strategy, we've identified multiple alumni using these plan giving resources. To be quite candid, you only visit the plan giving website for one reason. It's not as if the basketball score is at the bottom of the plan giving website. Um, we identified multiple alumni visiting the plan giving website who then did not reach out to the, give, to the gift officer. They're able, the gift officer was then able to reach out the next day and offer himself as a meaningful resource at a time when the alum is uh, deciding whether to leave the university in the estate plan. We had Capture hope that creating a meaningful relationship at that time will create a more meaningful gift for the alumnus, but it will also create additional gift opportunities as that alumnus comes closer to the institution. Heather, I'm gonna stop short of talking about the full marketing automation for custom experience because I realize that there's some of the specific terminology that we use in there. Um, and it might be helpful for the audience if we jump into a demonstration before I start uh, talking about uh, specific use cases with some terminology that I haven't explained yet. So sure, Heather, I'm going to pass absolutely. you the presenter roll, and it's, um, yeah. it's on its way to you. Great. You should see on my screen, so State College's website. Uh, this is our demo site that we've set up to be able to show folks how marketing automation can play with visitors on their EDU site. Um, so before I get started in the demo, I want to share two points of value that I think that CB has brought to our partners over the years. The first piece of that is that behavioral engagement in marketing automation has the ability to bring a personalized web experience based on individual behavior. The most important piece of that is that we can do that at scale. You don't have to have someone sitting and waiting, ready to spend, send the right information to the right student. The system is intuitive and can do that on its own. The second piece of the marketing automation value is really the real-time actionable data and intelligence about your alumni and donor base that can support you and the amazing work that you're doing every day. 
So those are the really the two main pieces of behavioral engagement that I want to bring to the forefront. Having said that, let's jump into faux state, shall we? Um, this is our, our demo partner, if you will. Uh, when Faux State started working with Capture and leveraging behavioral engagement in their advancement offices, um, the beginning part of the relationship looked a little something like this. Uh, we provided some code that was placed on the backside of their website. It's very similar in weight to Google Analytics. It sits in a similar place on your site. That code allows us to be able to track visitor behavior and also deploy our dynamic content elements without having to make a single structural change to Faux State's website. The second piece is that uh, Faux State actually provided Capture with their donor database. So we do a simple export, we load that into the system, and we leverage that information as we start to identify visitors to the site. And I'll show you how we do that during the demo. The third is actually giving Faux State access to the Capture Behavioral Engagement platform, okay? So what you're seeing right here on this particular screen is the user interface for behavioral engagement. This is our visitor stream right here. So this is a live feed of everyone that's hitting your website today. Um, I'm gonna grab this little anonymous user here from Aurora, Colorado, assuming that that's me. I'm gonna pull it down. We're gonna look at that particular anonymous user. We're gonna track this person as they're visiting the Faux State website and engaging with content there. So let's join Faux State and their alumnus, Heather. Cute, right? Uh, as she's traveling through the Faux State website as well. In our strategic conversations with Faux State at Capture, we uncovered the fact that they had just received notification that their business program had just been ranked number one in the universe. I think that's what Kevin shared with me. Um, and so that's obviously right. that's a point of pride that they want to be able to share with their alumnus. So we, uh, we actually built a behavioral rule that indicated if anyone came to the site and started exploring the College of Business, that we display some dynamic content that highlighted that ranking. So on the other side of the, on the desk, so to speak, Heather, who is a recent alumnus of Faux State, just read an article about that ranking. And she came onto the Faux State website and started exploring, of course, naturally, wanting to go into the academics world and check out the College of Business to find out more about this ranking. You'll see here in the bottom right-hand corner, we just triggered that behavioral rule uh, that displays information about the new ranking that we've received. This is a very passive way, if you will, to uh, deliver some content that's associated to this behavior. Even though we don't know who they are, we know that they're looking for that information. As Kevin has taught me through time, this is a great way of doing some friend raising. And by uh, friend raising before fundraising, we can be much more productive, right, Kevin? Yeah, Heather, I, I think it's probably worthwhile noting that the, the data that we've aggregated uh, suggests that in that first 30 days, half of the alumni that we've identified visited one time. So two takeaways from that. The first is, is great news is that half the alumni that are visiting are visiting multiple times a month um, and that they are highly engaged. Um, the other takeaway with that is that we have an opportunity on an alum's first visit to really deliver a message to create further engagement opportunities. And so as Heather mentioned, the friend raising message and in, in putting out a brag point for the institution is really meant to del deliver a point of pride for the institution, but also a point of pride for the alumnus that is going to encourage them to come back in the future. So Heather, if I'm not burying the lead too much, we're, we're, um, we're really excited that we're number one in the, in the universe. Um, the alum is now excited about that. And I think you'll see how friend raising can introduce a fundraising opportunity in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for the lead in, Kev. I appreciate it. Um, as Heather's been researching and learning more about the College of Business, obviously that toaster dynamic content element allowed her to explore that more. Um, after checking out the ranking information, learning a little bit more about that, she just comes over to the alumni page to see what might be happening in her area. You'll notice that there is no dynamic content being displayed, and that is intentional. We don't want to overload visitors with a bunch of pop-ups trying to personalize every step of their path through the website. But instead, we want them to be able to very organically find the information that they're, they're looking for. And if we can influence that through behavioral rules and dynamic content, we will. So as life happens, 
Heather finished checking out what's going on in the alumni world and leaves the Faux State website to go on to the rest of her life. Um, I'm going to flip over, as you can see here, to the user interface. This is that anonymous user that we've been tracking, Heather. We just don't know yet that it's her. I want to refresh for a moment and share with you. If we pop down into our visit details, this shows you that while we don't know who this individual is exactly yet, the system has been tracking every step that she's been taking on the website and also any of the content that we've served because of her behavioral triggers. This information isn't super powerful yet, but as we move into identification and finding out who this individual is, you'll see where that, that power comes in. So as Heather's gone on to the rest of her life, Post State has also been delivering different pieces of content, email communications, direct mail communications that are aligned with the solicitation calendar. And Heather opens up her email, and sure enough, there's one from Post State. This one happens to focus in on the men's basketball team and how fantastic they're doing this year. I'll tell you, Faux State's rocking it between their business program and the men's basketball program. There's not much better. You'll notice in, in any typical email communication that Faux State's sending or that you're sending out of your own solicitation calendar, you're going to try and redirect that alumnus back to your site for more information. There's a little bit of code at the end of this web link that allows the system to connect the user activity with an identity. So I'm gonna actually, as Heather clicks through on this particular email, I'm gonna show you what that web link looks like. So it's redirecting her to the athletics page, but here's our identifier code. This allows CVE that once Heather lands on that site with this identifier code to triangulate the IP address that we've been tracking, the device ID that we've been tracking of this anonymous user, and now because of this identifier code, we can tie that back to the donor record in your system that we've loaded into CBE and ultimately identify her. She lands on the athletics website and we're given another opportunity to display a toaster again. This time what we've done is we're doing a direct solicitation to Heather, asking her to donate now and tying in her anonymous behavior and the information that we've tracked before we knew who she was and her affinity to the business program to connect her website browsing behavior and influence where we'd like her to go. So that's a direct solicitation moment, leveraging dynamic content. Kev, anything to add there? Yeah, Heather, I'll just mention quickly, it might be helpful for our visitors to uh, think about the dynamic content that we introduced at the very beginning of this phone call. And so as we talk about the dynamic content that we put out, encouraging Heather to support the area of affinity that we identified on her first visit, um, our visitors, it might be helpful for them to know that other alumni are going to receive a different piece of dynamic content based on their visit. And so, again, if I'm an older alum that visits frequently, it very well may happen that that my piece of dynamic content uh, focuses on uh, plan giving opportunities. Uh, it very well, if I'm a young alum, it very well may happen that my dynamic content focuses on young alumni. And the important thing to take away here is we're not asking you to make structural changes to your website. This information is being delivered in real time at the point in time when alum is engaged with the institution based on their individual behaviors and or points within the data. That's fantastic. So we have the ability to write rule sets based on who that person is once they've been identified, as Kevin mentioned. I'm going to flip back behind the scenes into the user interface of behavioral engagement and show you what happens when Heather clicks that link to identify herself, refresh the system, and there's Heather in her profile. So she's no longer that anonymous user, but everything that we learned about Heather has stayed with her now identified user profile. So you can see all of the web traffic and, and click-throughs that she had while she was anonymous. There's that business toaster that we first served her. Um, and now we're beginning to track all of her behavior as a known individual on the website. CBE has stitched together all of that information, once again, based on that IP address, that device ID, and that identifier code that was in the email that she clicked through on. There are a couple of other things that become very, very valuable uh, now that we know who Heather is. Um, the first piece is that we pull together our engagement score and our affinity index. So these are two of the data analytic pieces that allow you to have real-time actionable information for you and your team. The engagement score focuses on the last seven days, so it's a rolling score. And, and measures the engagement that this particular individual has had with your website. 
So if you think about that as a, a real-time affinity score, right, it's, it's letting us know that Heather, a current alumnus for us or a donor within your population, is looking at you as an institution and paying attention to what you're doing. The second score here, our affinity index, is, is literally what it says. Uh, this is the cumulative evaluation of Heather's inter interaction with the institution and the website over time. Um, the third piece of data that we pulled together on this and this user profile is our star system. This is actually a five-star system that pulled in the capacity scores that you have in your current database and brings them to the user profile. As you can see, my current status is that I'm not a super high capacity alumnus, but I am quite engaged. So the first time hey, I Heather, always displayed, I... not a, yeah, Kevin, get in there. I was just gonna, I'm so sorry to interrupt, um, but no. I was just gonna take a moment to mention, I hope the gift officers that are watching right now are really excited. Um, because if I can reiterate what Heather <laughs> just said, on this individual record, we have capacity information, affinity information, and affinity scores on this single record. Um, and so as a gift officer that was sitting there making my blind discovery phone calls, uh, thinking there had to be a better way, when I look at this, I say marketing automation is the better way um, when we're able to assign actual affinity information to existing capacity information and, and use individual affinity points in our outreach all on the same record. So Heather, sorry to interrupt, I just get really excited at that point. I know you do. I love it when you pop in about this this topic. Um, the other piece I just want to point out to support what Kevin just shared with you is down here as we scroll down, you see this tag cloud. Um, we have our engagement score, so the real-time rolling affinity, where that alumnus is and whether or not they're paying attention to you right now. The affinity index, that cumulative look at their activity and engagement or their affinity with the institution. The tag cloud allows you to really see those individual points of affinity as Kevin mentioned. The difference being with marketing automation, we can look at that in real time. So what matters to Heather today? Not what we may have in our database, that like Heather was a chess champion within the chess club, and so she must care a lot about chess still. Well, what we've found out about Heather is that she's actually gone on to start her own business, and she's very, very interested in what's going on with our business program today. So that's a way to be able to use all of these pieces of information in combination. So that's the visitor profile and some of the analytics that are coming out of that. That tracking and the visit details will continue to build over time. Their engagement score will fluctuate, and that affinity index will t continue to grow as they engage with you through time. So I'll stop at the back side of behavioral engagement, and let's return back to Heather's session. Um, she had gone away from the website, maybe received one of those states' alumni newsletters, and um, had really piqued her interest to come back to the site. So she drops in on the alumni page and takes a look at what's going on. As she's clicking through, two things are happening in the background. One is that we have another version of our dynamic content. The second is that we've triggered an email from the system to Heather based on her behavior from Dr. Eckert, talking about some very specific information related to her. So let's go back to the popover here that's displayed on your screen. Um, this is truly our way of being very forthcoming in our solicitation to Heather. We've asked Heather to make a decision to donate and support Fo State's year-end push, right? So exploring that new year, new dream, to asking her to click through to learn more to get that donation commitment. We also know that we're making a choice or that Heather will make a choice. She will either engage with that solicitation or she'll go away because she's not quite ready. So in this case, Heather isn't quite ready. So she navigates away. And I'm actually going to refresh my email on the other side for that piece to come through. The, the second piece that I mentioned is that we've shown a lot of on-screen dynamic content, and that allows us to be able to customize that visual web experience. Another tool within behavioral engagement or another version of dynamic content is the ability to trigger a particular customized email based on the behavior of that known visitor. And to spare you my inbox today, I will open this up and bring it over for you. Um, so this was the email that was triggered because I had hit that alumni page more than once. Um, and because of my past history of looking at the business program, we were able to tailor an, e an email to Heather um, that specifically addressed her affinity points and asked 
asked for her support. So you'll notice that email was generated at 1.34, so about a minute ago, and the content of it is coming from Dr. Kevin Necker, who is the chair of the business program, and asking Heather, based on her affinity, to support the scholarship fund for future business students. Um, so this is another way that we're able to customize communications in real time at scale. Kevin, do you have anything you want to add here? Yeah, Heather, I think it, it's uh, helpful to note that I think a lot of our visitors are going to be very familiar with this when they go and they register for an event and they receive an email 10 seconds after they register for an event and an offer to put the event on their calendar. Uh, I want to make an important differentiation here that the email that Heather just received, yes, it was triggered in near real time, um, but our best practices would suggest that we generally build in a 24 to 48 hour delay. Um, it's, uh, it's a series of micro interventions. And the success of that is really based on marketing automation in uh, the business world. Um, and knowing that a series of micro interventions, so Heather's on the website now, she receives an email 24 or 48 hours later, and then when she comes back later on, she continues to receive that message. That, that series of impressions is really what helps a donor get to uh, the stage at which they are resonating with the message and that they're also uh, more comfortable raising their hand to support the institution. So um, just a, a quick differentiation for our listeners. Sure, absolutely. I'm going to show you one last uh, on-screen version of dynamic content. And in this instance, Heather, our alumnus, who's been visiting the post -State site for some time off and on over the last year, um, is remembering back to that email about the men's basketball team and wanted to actually go back in and check the schedule to see what game was coming up next. What I'm about to show you is our image swap. So you'll notice right here, this graphic here um, is dynamically triggered based on the behavior again of our known visitor. The important piece about this is that it's not a, a very overt way of asking uh, Heather to do something, rather more of a passive solicitation. This micro intervention, much like this uh, image swap, allows you as, a, as an advancement officer to passively remind Heather of her point of affinity. So you'll notice here it's asking her to, to support business degrees and scholarship funds related to those and provide her with an avenue to support um, her when she's ready to donate. So this can passively lie within Heather's web experience and be there when she's ready and thinking about supporting the business program or supporting the athletic program or whatever that point of affinity might be. So that's, uh, those are all of the different examples of dynamic content that we have to date. Um, I mentioned in the very beginning that beyond the marketing automation and creating a customized experience, the second value within behavioral engagement is that real-time analytics and information. So we showed you what that um, visitor profile looked like when it was an identified user. The other piece that we that we trigger for our partners, and this is more of an internal trigger, so this is actually an email, our daily visitor report, that hits our partners' inboxes, um, obviously every day, very obviously titled, um, about 6, 6.30 in the morning, and allows them to have a very clear view of which of their identified alumni have been on their site in the last 24 hours. So this can be a very powerful tool for prospect research areas or for our major gift folks, any of the different individuals that are working in the advancement office to have a sense of, again, which alumni are paying attention to you now. Kevin, I know that this is a piece that you're very passionate about. Do you wanna share some of the experiences in, that you have? Yes, I think this is a real game changer. So again, from someone who has made the, the blind discovery phone calls, uh, to get this email every morning with capacity information and affinity information for alumni visiting the website the, the day before, uh, for me is a real game changer. Uh, for my gift officers that are listening, think about receiving this every morning at 6.30 and using this list to prioritize your outreach for the day. Um, so you can not only deliver a meaningful message if you're looking to develop a new relationship, but you can, you can deliver a timely message. I think the other important thing to talk about here is that since this is an internal trigger, it's up to you on what you do with this information. You don't necessarily call this person and say, hey, Heather, we noticed you were visiting the basketball website yesterday. Why don't you join us for the basketball game? You simply call Heather, introduce yourself, and invite her to the basketball game. And Heather doesn't have to know that you were, that you were uh, knowledgeable of her behavior, um, but you're developing a meaningful relationship from the very beginning. 
The same can be, can be true for any plan giving officers that are listening. If you receive this email in the morning and you identify the right plan giving prospect based on capacity, affinity, grad year information, um, we'll make it very easy for you to do that. Um, you don't necessarily need to tell the person that you know they visited the plan giving website yesterday. You simply call to offer and be a resource at a very meaningful time in the alums experience. A few other options across the advancement office uh, for prospect research. Heather, I'm glad you brought up prospect research. If you say, Kevin, I would love for this report to come to me in prospect research, and then I can do some additional research or I can append some information that's important to specific gift officers, we would be happy to deliver it directly to prospect research. Um, one other thing as I, as I go across the advancement office, I think about our directors of annual giving that might be on the phone call. Um, and I want to reiterate um, that as we're able to identify individual alumni, we're also able to aggregate information from those individual visits. So again, we're going to be able to report back to you on what audiences are opening your, uh, your annual gifts, or I'm sorry, your annual solicitations, what audiences um, are not opening your annual solicitations, but of equal importance, what audiences are opening your alumni newsletter and what audiences are not opening your alumni newsletter? So you can then tailor future articles in the newsletter to engage an audience again in fundraising so that later on when you deliver a friend, I'm sorry, in friend raising so that later on when you deliver a fundraising message that it is more successful. So sorry I got a little tied up there in the end, Heather. I was trying to make a, a run in my mind across the entire advancement office. Um, but I hope that uh, that the presentation that, that Heather just walked us through uh, really shows the dynamic uses of CBE across the advancement office. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm going to pause for a moment and ask if you all have any questions. Please submit those. Kevin and I are happy to walk through those while we're here together in the webinar. Um, as we're, we're pausing for you to be able to do that, I want to share with you um, beyond the power of the tool itself, what we provide for you with behavioral engagement is the fact that it's a managed service. Um, a lot of folks that we talk to out in, in the profession are concerned about constrained resources as it is. I can't take on one more thing. This sounds like an amazing tool. I can see the value and how it can accelerate my team. But if we have to take on one more project, I just don't know what we're going to do. So we built this software platform understanding what your world is like every day and providing you with a team of experts to help make this a light list for you and your team. That managed service team is comprised of folks like a strategist that's going to take um, a look at your solicitation calendar, your goals for the year, and translate those into behavioral rules and dynamic content campaigns. We have content writers and graphic designers that design all of those on-screen images, uh, toasters, popovers, et cetera, um, with your brand standards and approval ultimately in mind before we deploy any campaign. Uh, we have a project manager that makes sure that the trains stay on time and that we're being effective in deploying the tool with you. And finally, we have our data analysts that are taking a look at what Kevin was just mentioning the deep set of information and data that we can grab from web traffic and alumni behavior and turn that into actionable information for you and your team. So this really allows us to provide you with a safety net as you deploy a piece of software and accelerate your use and success with it. So I'm checking over and I don't see any questions, Kevin, but what I'll do is I'll pull up the last part of our PowerPoint presentation here because as Kevin and I were brainstorming prior to the webinar, while you may not have questions right off the top of your head, we have some questions for you to consider with your team. Kevin, do you want to walk us through the first couple? Sure, happy to. So uh, as you're thinking through what you saw today, um, if you're thinking that marketing automation might be a, a good option for you, um, there are a few next steps that you might consider. Again, these are focused on the conversations that we've had uh, with potential partners across the country um, and the considerations that they're making as we walk through this. The first would be to review your current web traffic. For anyone who's currently using Google Analytics, um, that's able to tell you very high level how much traffic you're receiving on your current website, um, I, I give you uh, kudos, kudos to you. Um, I think you would be very impressed in seeing what marketing automation could tell you based on not only how many visitors you have to each website, but who those visitors are to make the data more actionable. For anyone who is not currently uh, aggregating traffic and, and looking at overall numbers to their websites, we would highly encourage you uh, to start doing that. 
because you may be surprised at how much traffic things like your alumni newsletter and your athletic schedule actually generate. The other thing would be to evaluate current message effectiveness. Um, I will get it right this time, Heather. In, in fund, friend raising creates fundraising opportunities. Um, so again, more than who is or is not giving, who is our message resonating with? Um, and what could you do with that information? So if you currently have a strategy where you're able to identify uh, uh, alumni populations that are resonating with your message, um, I hope that you would consider identifying alumni populations that are not resonating with your message. And do you have the ability to alter those messaging to engage that new, um, that new population? So evaluate your current message effectiveness, much like we talked about today. And then the third would be evaluate your leadership and major gift prospect tools. A lot of the conversations that we're having today focus on two main themes. Kevin, we need more major gift prospects. We've been going back to the same individuals for far too long. They're being poached by other nonprofits. Maybe some of them have passed. And we just need to increase the number of major gift prospects that we have. If you, if you need that, that plan, uh, you might consider what marketing automation, what we talked about today, can do for you. The other side of that coin is, Kevin, we have too many qualified prospects. Um, so we've had conversations with potential partners that say, Kevin, we have so many leadership or major gift qualified prospects that we need a place to start. Um, I've only got a certain number of gift officers, and right now they're calling blindly through the list based on capacity, um, but we would be much more efficient if we had a place to start. Um, and would something like Capture's Affinity Index and the Daily Visitor Report be a good place for you to start if you're considering marketing automation? Heather, if you want to go on to uh, numbers four, five, and six. Yes, for those that can still hear us, I apologize. We're having a little bit of a connection issue, and we should be reestablishing right now. Um, as we look at step four, five, and six, essentially we'll be able that's to okay. include that in our communication follow-up. No, that's all right. We'll send out a follow-up email after this webinar um, that share with you several other things that are great to think about as you decide whether or not marketing automation is, is a good fit for you and your team. Um, I know that it has been um, a good time together. We're pushing up on the end of our webinar time together. I want to make sure that you can get back to your day. So on behalf of both Kevin and myself, we look forward to talking with you in the future about how this might work for you and your team individually. But more importantly, thank you so much for joining us today. For all out there, have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon.